anyway, um, unfortunately, when you work in open source software, it's kind of difficult to reveal a new feature because you can always just check out the code and look at it. So it's not like we work behind closed doors, but I thought I'd make everyone aware of some of the cool new features we have coming. Um, there are people in this room who are responsible for many of them, uh, so I hope you'll find it. I do want to talk about Ulf for a second. Um, Ulf is our, as Alex mentioned, is our mascot. He's been around the world and seen a, 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 a lot of different people. Um, and the reason we chose him as our mascot is he's kind of like the group that's here. Um, everyone from here, we've got people from Vietnam, we've got people from Germany, of course, we've got people from Finland, we've got people from Italy, we've got some of us from the United States. Um, and it's just nice that we can all come together despite politics, despite anything else, because of open source software. Anyway, so what's coming in the next OpenNMS? We have released OpenNMS 1.11.90. For those of you who don't know, the way we're, we release OpenNMS is we, um, anything that's an even number, like dot two, dot four, dot six, that's considered a stable or production release. Anything that's an odd number, dot three, dot five, dot seven, dot eleven, that's considered an unstable or development release. Unstable is actually a poor choice of words because it has absolutely nothing to do with the stability of the code, but the fact that we change a lot of stuff in unstable. The idea with a stable code is that we only do bug fixes and small incremental uh, upgrades versus what's happening in, in uh, unstable. Now that we've released 1.11.90, that is the first release candidate for 1.12. And our goal is to have 1.12 out in probably another four weeks. So we encourage you to download, um, download 1.12, uh, 1.11.90, check it out. Um, and I'm gonna show you some of the things that are coming. First of all, we're trying to make OpenNMS more usable. If I had to pick something to say, uh, uh, something to identify this release, we're trying to make it a lot more useful and usable just from the GUI standpoint. Um, everyone might remember when you log into OpenNMS on the far left-hand side, there's nodes with outages. And that was kind of important back in 2001, 2002, because most of the things that were going wrong with OpenNMS expressed themselves in the form of a service outage. We do a poll, services down. The problem with that is, suppose I have an outage, how do I do the workflow? How do I know that someone has, um, is dealing with a particular outage? How do I track what's going on? It just sits there. <laughs> and I'd been asking for a long time, I want someone to write a snooze button. So I can say, okay, I had this outage, just make it go away for a day or a week and then come back if it's not fixed. Well, we ended up, uh, with one of our clients, we ended up saying, why don't we set up, instead of outages, we do alarms. If you can remember, alarms is our great automation feature. So I could say, okay, acknowledge an alarm, and if it's not corrected, it's not cleared in 24 hours, have an automation that unacknowledges it. So now I can build my workflow into that front page. So one of the biggest changes you'll notice is when you log on, you won't see nodes with outages, you'll see node with problems. And again, it looks very, very similar to how many alarms something has. The color references the highest alarm. So these are all major alarms. The little yellow one down there is a minor alarm. Uh, forgive me for, we name almost all of our machines after South Park characters. So that's why I have Barb Brady and Kevin and Marvin and Mr. Mackey and Big Gay Al. But um, Big Gay Al's a Solaris box. The HPUX boxes, we've got a little titanium box and a big fat uh, um, uh, PA risk box. So the little titanium box is Satan, and the, I mean Saddam, and the little big one is uh, Satan. So anyway. When you click on a node now, on the node page, it'll tell you if there are services down. So you get the same functionality that you used to have with outages, because outages are still there, but then it'll also tell you where there's problems, whether unacknowledged or acknowledged problems. So that's kind of cool. So that's the first thing. The next thing, how many of you use KSC reports? Aren't they fun to create? Especially on a network with about 1,000, 2,000 nodes, you click on reports, you click on KSC reports, you scan through pages and pages and pages, and then you click on child resources and you drag down and then you finally get your graph and you hit okay. 
and then you do it again for the next one. Now, there's a little button. If I'm looking at a report, so this is from, has anyone heard about my drink machine? So I have a network-enabled drink machine, and I use OpenNMS to monitor the drink machine. And um, when anyone buys a soda, I get a notice, and when it gets below three, I get a threshold event that tells me I have to go buy more Coke. So Coca-Cola. Um, so this is my uh, drink machine. As you see, it's not very busy, but if I wanted to add the CPU statistics to a KSC report, all I have to do now is hit this little plus button. When I hit the plus button, it'll pop up a little add KSC report. I can create a new report, but you also have this kind of Ajaxy lookup down there that'll show you your, uh, your existing reports and you can add to an existing report. Again, a usability kind of thing because we write this and the functionality is there and then we forget about it and then we actually get on a site and go, crap, how can you actually use this? I mean, my network has about 30 nodes on it, so it's not too bad for me. We have customers with 60,000 nodes and KSC reports would be un just unusable. But here you could go through, find the node, hit the node page, hit resource graphs, and add it to a KSC report. So, another feature for usability. This is one Jeff did, right? You did the free form. How many of you, I see a bunch of familiar faces. How many of you were in training this week? How many of you have been here since Tuesday? So, yes. So everything I taught you is now wrong. <laughs> There's a lot of things that have been automated that we did the old-fashioned way. I was thinking about it this morning. It's kind of like um, uh, when I was growing up, calculators became affordable, but you still had to do everything on paper because it builds character or whatever. And now I'm like, everyone who did training this week, they know the old way of doing things, and they can appreciate more the new way of doing things. Um, one of the things we did um, was talk about adding services. So we had a class monitor service and a class collector service. And to add them, what we had to do was go into a foreign source, create the service. We'd use the loopback detector, which pretty much returns false, add it to the database, and go. Um, Jeff set up something. If you just want to add a service, boom. You come here, you turn on freeform editing, you enable that, and then you can just type the service name right in the field when you add the node. So that's kind of cool. VMware, how many of you use VMware? Yes. How many of you are excited that we're finally going to address VMware stuff? <laughs> so um, I'm a big open source guy, so I'm a more of a Zen KVM guy, but uh, a lot of people use VMware. VM virtualization was the buzzword before cloud, you know, but it only lasted like a couple of months and then it was cloud. But um, I get kind of upset sometimes, uh, like Microsoft decided to invent their own protocol called WMI. And I actually heckled, uh, I try not to heckle, but I heckled a Microsoft guy. He was doing a presentation, it's like, we've decided that we needed some way to exchange management information between a managed device and the network manager. I'm like, we have that, it's called SNMP, why don't you just support SNMP? So no, they ran off and made their own WMI, um, they made their own WMI protocol, we finally got libraries for it, so we can do WMI and OpenNMS, and they stopped using it. <laughs> so I'm looking, I was, I was at a customer site, they just upgraded from Exchange, you know, 9BC to Exchange 300 AD, and um, <clears throat> used to have a, uh, WMI, you could get your mail queue stats and everything, totally gone. There's a thing called PowerShell now. VMware was the same way. VMware used to support SNMP, but they ended up, um, moving to their own vSphere tool. And uh, Christian and Ronnie, or is Christian, where'd he go? There he is, they're in the back now. He was over here. So Christian, um, they did a, a nice paper on, um, on doing VMware. Here's some um, VMware statistics. Um, I don't have a good, uh, didn't have a good picture, so I had to like scrape this off of a PDF, so I apologize for the quality. Uh, and it was also, Ronnie likes Mac, so his had all this kind of weird bendy stuff. I'd use the GIMP to kind of level it back out. But, um, so now we can get statistics on both the host and the guest operating systems. And the nice part is, once you get this kind of information into OpenNMS, all the old things apply. You can do threshold alerts, you can do alarms, you can do anything you want based upon this as long as you get the connection in. So we now have the ability to do VMware 
um, data collection. Okay, we struggled this uh, uh, in class at um, compiling MIBs. Well, Alejandro wrote a MIB compiler. So you go into home, admin, click on SNMP MIB compiler, upload your MIB file, and then you can massage it, get the information you want out of it. It's really, really cool. This used to have to be you'd run the MIB, par the, um, MIB parser, it would parse the MIBs, you'd get a text file, you had to go kind of edit it. This is a GUI way of doing all that. As you can see, we have a few MIBs that are in here. When you process the MIB, you can then manage data collection. So here's my d different data collection schemas. Um, this, I, I took this off today. Uh, I will apologize. The system I have is a little wonky, a little strange, um, because I got a, a database so I could show you some cool things. So I'm not quite sure what the EJN data collection is. But the, um, the default data collection, this is exactly like you would see it in the data collection config. If you click on up there on data collection groups, it'll bring up your data collection groups. So I brought up NetSNMP. So we have our different groups. And you can go down and you can edit these groups, add things, change things, remove things, all through the GUI. And you don't have to do it through the file. Now, one of the things I've always liked about OpenNMS is you do have a choice of still using the file. We haven't taken anything away from you. Um, I can remember I was in Australia. We have what we call our evil customers. And they're not evil like, you know, Satan evil, but um, like one of our customers was the tax department of the county of New South Wales in Australia. So I was in the building that did traffic camera tolls and things like that. And so they were kind of like evil. And the boss man handed me a, uh, mailed me an, an Excel spreadsheet with 50 usernames, emails, phone numbers, all this stuff, and said, put them into OpenNMS as users. Now, I could have sat there and just typed in unusual names, unusual uh, phone numbers, et cetera, but instead, I just saved it as a comma-separated variable, wrote a uh, comma-separated var uh, comma variable file, wrote a little script that went and formatted the XML the way I needed it to be. I dropped that into the users.xml, and I was done. So that will always be there, but if you need to make a quick tweak, if you want to do something a little more uh, graphical, you have that as well. The same thing goes for events. You can now go in and manage all your events and change your event descriptions and things like that all through the GUI. It's really, really cool. How many of you read my blog? Nobody. I've got a few hands. So I have a blog called Adventures in Open Source Software, and most of the time it's about OpenNMS. I did a, uh, an entry a while ago on the MIB management tool through the GUI. And if you go to openNMS.org slash videos, you should see this video here, which is about 10 minutes long, and it's Alejandro showing you how to use those tools. I thought about um, plugging it up here and doing it, but I figured you guys can all go and watch it. But um, the only weird part is when he wrote it for Major, it was Mejor, because he's Spanish. Uh, so uh, we were like, oh, you need to change Major to a G instead of a Y, uh, instead of a J. But anyway, um, there's a really, really good um, graphic on how you use these things. It's relatively intuitive. So if you just download the software, run it, hit admin, hit the MIB browser, you should be able to, to manage it. Another interesting feature, the near real-time grapher. Now, if the gods are smiling on me, I'll actually be able to get this to work. <laughs> so, oh, okay, that looks like it might be working. So I have this kind of fake database running. So I've got an SNP agent running in a VM, running on my little laptop. Um, this is your standard graphs. So I've got my, by default, five-minute intervals. See my graph, this is when I got it working this morning at about five. <laughs> this is when I shut it off to come here and it started it back up. Um, the question is, what would happen if you're like, hey, I want to monitor my current TCP connections, um, but I want to do it in real time. I'm real concerned about what's going on. Well, now you can click near real time graphic. Ah, I hit the wrong thing. Now I can bring up my near real-time graph. So let me bring up a terminal window. 
And I'll secure shell to www.openms.org. Come back here. So you can see there's been a huge spike in my connections. And this is kind of a rolling window, but I can actually set the interval to be like 60 seconds. And then it'll kind of, it should, whoops, sorry. It'll kind of scrunch up now when it's running. But now, for all of the different, anything you collect on OpenNMS, you can temporarily increase your polling so that you can watch it in real time. So you can actually see if you've got a temperature issue or CPU issue, et cetera, you can now bring this up in real time. It actually will do, it'll connect and it'll do the S&P get. So every second or whatever it'll do. Oh, that's what I think I did. I'm not sure. We're doing a get and displaying it. This isn't being stored anywhere, I don't believe. So the people who wrote it are here. <laughs> so, can you do? Um, this is in a separate window. So the question is, can we do multiple graphs at once? So my guess is that I can scrunch that bad boy down, put him here. I can go back to my resource graphs and maybe choose. I don't know. I, um, no, you can't combine them onto one page, but because they're separate windows, I can kind of have two going at the same time. Now, I'm not 100% sure why there's some, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I guess we're not doing any ICN. I'm not pinging anything. If I ping localhost. See some messages here. There we go. Right, now you can see it says 12. I, I'm not quite sure. There we go. So we're starting to see some pings there. So this should help a lot as far as diagnosing uh, instantaneous issues, things that you might want to see. Is that cool? So getting back. Where's my, uh... okay, how many of you are familiar with OSGI? Um, I, it's, it was an acronym for Open Services Gateway Initiative, but I think it's changed now and they just call it OSGI. I don't think they reference this anymore. OSGI is a technology and I am, you are going to hear in the next sentence about all I know about OSGI. <laughs> OSGI, I'm not a programmer. But OSGI really allows us to do dynamic changes to a Java virtual machine. So we can add and remove components to a Java virtual machine. This is the first step in realizing my dream of a totally infinitely scalable open NMS. The idea would be you would have maybe five or six boxes all marked as open NMS. One of them would be the master server. And using OSGI, it would say, okay, you two are now doing data collection. You're doing service monitoring, you're managing events, et cetera. Um, but the idea is we are able to add things dynamically to OpenNMS without having to restart it. Um, and, uh, and we can extend the features. I want to show you, uh, I should have an example where we'll use OSGI um, on the system um, and uh, to, to, add, to add some functionality to it. Again, I'm not super, I just know everyone's really excited that we're doing this, so I'll put a slide up. Maps. I hate maps. It comes back to I was abused as a child. Um, one of my jobs was with Network Node Manager at a, uh, an um, ISP. The ISP would deploy a bunch of DSL routers every day. If you ever use the mapping that came with HP OpenView, if you made a geographical map, if you actually laid out, say, United States and you had little icons for the states, once you laid that out, any new device would actually show up in a little tray at the bottom of the screen. And you could click on it and drag it and a little line would appear to which container it needed to go. They were turning up four, five, six hundred devices a day. 
So I would come in every morning, I'd click and I'd drag, oh, okay, that one goes in California. Click and drag, oh, that one goes in Florida. Click and drag, oh, that one goes in New York. And then I'd click on Florida, and because we had a map of Florida, all the ones I stuck there would be in a tray. And I had to click and drag, oh, that one goes in Orlando. I'll click and drag, that one goes in Miami. I'll click and drag, that one goes in Jackson. So um, those were the days. I got paid really well, but uh, I really, really wanted to slip my wrists. Um, and, you know, I can still remember I, the first uh, network management thing I ever did um, in Datacom. I, I, when I worked at Northern Telecom, I did a lot of stuff in the telecom world, but it was for a cellular provider, and their big um, office was Pennsylvania. That's a big area, their big, uh, where most of their customers were. And it was so big that we had actually put two icons. So when you clicked on Pennsylvania, there was Eastern Pennsylvania and Western Pennsylvania, since that's how they divided their sales regions. Well, it turns out the, in, the status color of an icon in OpenView was based upon the status of the underlying objects. Red meant that none of the underlying objects were normal. All of them were some other color. Well, it turned out that if someone turned in one of the malls, in one of the shopping malls, they had these kiosks, if someone turned off the printer and that caused an outage, and someone in Philadelphia on the eastern side turned off a printer and it caused an outage, Pennsylvania would turn red. And I can still remember the VP is walking down, looking at the map, and he sees his number one network, his number one market is critical. It's this bright red color, and he freaks out. You know, what do you mean the market's down? Um, so, never, never had a good map, map thing. So, there was a, a gentleman many, many years ago who put a little map into OpenNMS using SVG, and it was okay. And then we had our very own Antonio Russo said, well, I'm going to make this much better. And he did. As far as maps go, I was extremely happy with the map that uh, Antonio made. Um, still don't like maps, but it wasn't due to Antonio, it's just I don't like maps. So then we created, uh, for the remote monitors, in our class yesterday, we did a remote monitor example, and we set up monitors in all these different locations, and you could see them on a world map. You could see monitors in Saigon, and Shanghai, and in Fulda, and in Helsinki. Um, so we've actually created two new maps. So going from zero maps, we now have four. <laughs> so there are four maps available in OpenNMS. So now I'm going to switch over to a live demo. I'm going to cross my fingers that it actually works. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you about our maps. Uh, so, the first type of map is our topology map. We're going to end up uh, standardizing on two types of maps. A topology map, which is how are things connected at a logical, um, in a logical manner, and a geographical map, where are things located. What I'm about to show you now is the uh, topological map. So, let me zoom out. So can you all see this? Isn't that kind of cool? So we have a network here. I can zoom out even more. We have two types of zooms in our map. Um, one type is your size, so we zoom in and zoom out. The other thing is a contextual zoom. So kind of like uh, uh, Google, when you go in and you cross a threshold, it starts showing you more things. So we might have a data center, and as the data center gets bigger, we'll eventually switch over to where you see inside the data center. Um, so this is a, a network of Juniper gear. Um, the color that you see on the rings here shows you the status. On the bottom here, we have an alarm browser. So it'll show you which devices have alarms. If you click on a particular device, like this Penrose, it's going to zoom in to that particular node. You can put in utilities. So there's a utilities menu. If I right mouse click on this, the one utility that we have is SSH. This will SSH through the OpenNMS server. Of course, you can disable that if you consider this a uh, security issue. But basically, like I NAT into my network right now. So I can get to my OpenNMS, but if I try to ping the 172.20.1.1 .1 .1 node, I'm not going to be able to get there. 
Here I can actually go in, do log uh, host and username, and log in directly to that box from the GUI. And this is an extensible system, so you can actually add new devices. Um, let me zoom back out. Oh, come on. Um, you can change the view. I can do a circle layout. Whee! And so you can look at things in circle. Um, other views. I don't know uh, KK layout. Looks kind of like that. Um, spring. I like the springy ones because they kind of bounce. <laughs> they kind of spring around. So we can zoom in like that. Um, the topology that we're dealing with right now is called the link D topology. This is the um, topology that Antonio created. So it's a layer two link topology. We find layer two and layer three links. Um, if you have more than one link between a device, the first line is straight. Every other line kind of bows out. So if you had a, a bunch of links here, you would actually see the first line and then it would bow in between the each different line. Um, just like on our other maps, you can, you can click on a node, you can go to that node's page, um, you can do events alarms, you can group items together. It's kind of cool. Um, so this is the LinkD topology adapter. The, we built an API that you can create your own topologies. And this is what was done for VMware. So I'm going to delve into the realm of a live demo and hope that I get this to work. Um, so where's my class group? There, that's the one I want. So if you want to connect to the OSGI gateway, you just SSH to it. So if I SSH to port 8101, admin at OpenNMS, top secret password. Oh, don't tell. I'll let you guys figure it out. It's five characters. Um, it was 8101, right? Admin at localhost. Yeah. And then admin's the password, and I get a little open in a mess. And now I'm going to source that file that I just copied. So source, temp. Oh, of course I didn't. <sighs> what was the name of it? Groups script carafe, groups dash script dot carafe. Now, when I go back to my map, I can do view. Oh, I thought uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. Darn it. Why didn't it work? Did I do something wrong? It worked this morning. Let's see if I can do this again. Temp groups. That's it, right? Groups dash script dot graph. Ah, when I did this in the hotel this morning, it worked just fine. Go back to topology map. View. Ah, I apologize. Something I've done has messed that up. Um, I wanted to show um, we have a database in here with the that that tool that I just ran was supposed to load in the VMware um, topology map. So uh, the guys here in Germany actually uh, we had Matt Brzezowski, who's our CTO, come here. And he told them about the uh, topology adapter. And they sat down and wrote a host guest VMware, NAS VMware. And you got a really, really cool, trust me, it's really cool. Um, let me try Chrome. Give me two seconds, because I know I tried this. Maybe it's not working yet on. Uh... Mm. 
No. There was a VMware group map that was supposed to be there, and it's gone. I apologize. Um, but it's, it's, you would be able to actually see your host systems, your guest systems, how they were connected to the uh, uh, network access storage, and their status. It's kind of neat. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have that. So that is our topology map. Um, as I said, we've improved quite a few things. Um, we've improved quite a few things on um, Link D. So the Link D is very, very accurate. Uh, the idea is in the future you'll be able to add new topologies. If you've got a way to relate your systems and they're different, you can put your own topology information in there. It's kind of cool. Now, if I wanted to talk about the node map, this is our new geographical map. So now, as you can see, I have a geographical map. Um, anywhere you see just the single, single flag, what do they call these flags? What are the pins? I think I call them pins. Anywhere you see a single pin, that's a single device. Anywhere you see a circle, that's a group of devices. And that's a group of devices where the status, the, the alarm status of the, the highest alarm status of any one of those devices is there. So if I click on 28, you can see my different devices here. Oh, come on. How do I zoom in? What did I just do? Oh, these are all going to be in the same spot. <laughs> this system is actually from Juniper. Um, Juniper has licensed our code. So all of those 26 devices are obviously in the same spot which is why I'm having trouble uh, seeing them separate. But as you notice some of them peeled off. So as I zoomed in, some of them peeled off. And so you'll be able to do both a, um, was there a question? Oh, please answer, ask any questions that you want on here. So when we, get fi when we finalize everything, I honestly believe we're just going to have the two maps. So we'll have a geographic map. We're doing geographical things and a topology map for showing uh, functionality in between devices. Um, the hope is that this will work a lot better, maybe even on mobile devices where you can just click on uh, an icon to drill down into it instead of, um, instead of having to, to drill around like we do now. But um, a lot of work actually went into making this possible. Yes, sir? Um, it comes from your system location for the particular node. So if I click on this guy here, so if I click on this guy here, um, maybe, there's the geo coordinates. So it comes from asset information. So it comes out of the asset information. Um, I know with our distributed polars, we actually have a geo encoder that will actually go. You put in an address, and it'll go look up the coordinates. Um, here, I believe these were put in via the um, via the asset the asset table because it doesn't appear to be in the uh, this location. But so, oh come on, there we go, maps. Why am I launching mail? Go away, mail. Okay, maps. So as I said, we've got a lot of work going into there. Um, be a lot of interesting things to play with. You are able to create groups of devices. Um, I really wish I could have shown you the VMware. I'll try and see if I can get it loaded again. I don't know why. It worked fine in the hotel. Um, but in the uh, tradition of uh, Steve Jobs, I did have, there's one more thing. Oh, one more thing. Um, but this has absolutely nothing to do with OpenNMS as uh, software. As I mentioned, um, the, uh, you know, being open source, it's kind of hard to surprise people. We can't, uh, 
I get on my, my uh, soapbox when I deal with these companies in the US that they say they're open source, but they only do a little bit of open source and the rest. So they have these great unveiling, veilings. We're gonna come unveil the new release. And I'm like, that's not open source. Open source, you can always get the new release. In fact, I scrambled to get this building this morning because they fixed a bunch of bugs at about five o'clock last night. Um, so um, the one more thing is the foundation. Uh, I am extremely, extremely happy that there is a nonprofit, totally independent users group foundation. Um, there was a time when um, OpenNMS, uh, the OpenMS group, my company, back in 2009, a company tried to acquire us. And we thought it was going to be a pretty good fit. And um, so we, we got all the way to the term sheet, but we changed our mind at the last minute. Um, and the reason was I had an argument with the CEO of the company that was doing the acquiring. And I was very, very concerned that if we were going to sell the company that we needed to make sure the community was happy with that. You know, and he basically could care less about the community. There was a time when OpenNMS consisted of me in my attic. From 2000 to 2003, it was me in a room upstairs with a laptop and an IRC channel. And it was the community that kept us going. Um, the fact that we now have an independent user, that you now have an independent users community, uh, just warms my heart. Because that means no matter what happens to my company, OpenNMS can, can continue and thrive. And so what I want you guys to look at when you're coming in these next two days is the talks you're seeing are by people who actually use this stuff. They're not by me. This is the last talk I'm giving. And I'm grateful for it. But uh, this is hard. It's hard to do this kind of stuff. Um, but it's users. It's users like you, because that's what we write it for. OpenNMS is a network management application platform. We want you to build things with it. And I want to see what you go out and build. Amaze me. So again, thanks for coming. Thank you for uh, listening to me prattle on again. Please go and download the, uh, the latest release candidate. Uh, I think it'd be the un whatever the unstable is. I downloaded the Bleeding Edge repo last night. But um, try it out. Give us feedback. Uh, have a great conference. And thanks again.